Stan Jibalisco here. I would like to explain just briefly what is meant by the term conventional current when we're talking about electrical circuits. Particularly simple direct current circuits like you would get if you connected up a battery to a light bulb. That's an excellent example as a matter of fact. A battery and a light bulb. Here's the schematic symbol for an old-fashioned incandescent light bulb, like the kind of a bulb you would have in an old railway lantern. Or a lot of flashlights, even today, still use these kinds of bulbs. And here is the schematic symbol for our little electrochemical battery. Now, normally, in an electrochemical battery, the short line is the negative and the long line is the positive terminal of the battery. Electrons will flow, or should I say they will jump from atom to atom to atom in the wire as they go around in this direction from negative to positive because electrons have a negative electrical charge. They call that a unit electrical charge. In fact, one electron has one electrical charge unit of negative charge. So current flows from negative to positive if we think of the current as electrons. But there's a catch. Back in the olden days of uh, electricity, when people didn't really know about how atoms were put together and what electrons were, and the fact that electrons could carry electrical current or comprised electrical charge units, people didn't know anything about that. All they knew was that if they did certain things to certain objects, like rubbed certain kinds of cloth, like silk on a, on a rod of glass or other things, they could create some sort of a phenomenon that they called electricity. And then they noticed that that electrical phenomenon, that buildup of charge, as it were, could be neutralized by some kind of a process called a current flow, where the electrical charge would discharge, and they, they knew somehow that something was flowing from one place to another to create that discharge. So they arbitrarily named one sort of electrical pole plus, and the other sort of electrical pole minus. So one of the charge centers, or or charge masses, as it were, was called positive arbitrarily, and the other called negative. And they, they based these definitions on the observed phenomena. So there were certain standards. You always knew that two different objects might have opposite charges, in which case they could discharge to each other quickly and neutralize, or like charges, that is the same charge, and if those charge quantities were equal, you could connect them together and you wouldn't get any flow of current. And they define current naturally, intuitively, as flowing from plus to minus. And they just hung on to those definitions based on the way that objects would behave when rubbed up against each other or otherwise treated in such a way that they would hold an electrical charge. Even the atmosphere now, we know, holds electrical charges. Clouds, for example, may hold an electrical charge with respect to the surface, and the neutralization of that charge is what we call lightning. And, of course, lightning comprises a flow of electrons, literally. But, if we take these original definitions of plus and minus and apply them directly to phenomena today, we find that the electrons turn out to have the negative charge. And 
there isn't really any object or any specific object that has a positive charge. A positively charged atom can exist. We might have a positively charged atom if we have a neutral atom and then we take away one or more electrons and that kind of an atom is called an ion, a positive ion. That is an object, but those atoms don't actually move from place to place to create current under normal conditions. Protons have a net positive electrical charge, part of the nuclei of atoms, and the nucleus alone of any atom, any atom's nucleus, has a positive charge, but we don't see atomic nuclei flowing through wires or through electrical, ordinary electrical components. We do see atomic nuclei, particularly protons, which are hydrogen nuclei, or uh, alpha particles, as they're called, which are helium nuclei, comprising two neutrons and two protons. We do see those positively charged objects occasionally flowing through the vacuum or semi-vacuum of space between the sun and the earth. In fact, if, it's, if we have a solar storm, we may get a bombardment of subatomic particles or nuclei with a positive charge. The earth may be bombarded with those particles and they will accelerate in the vicinity of the earth's magnetic poles, creating the aurora borealis. Uh, if you live far up in the northern hemisphere somewhere, like Alaska, you'll see them often. But it turns out that the real electrical objects that are flowing in this wire are going from minus to plus. But they still s cling for some reason to the notion that current flows from plus to minus. Now they particularly are physicists. Physicists usually define current like this, and their mathematical formulae will always depict current like this if it matters. Whereas ordinary engineers and hobbyists like you and me will more often think of current as going from minus to plus. However, in the conventional sense, that is the uh, according to original convention, conventional current flows from plus to minus. Well, that's kind of a kind of a weird convention. But we've clung on to it, or I should say we, meaning physicists have clung on to it anyway. And I'd say maybe that's not such a bad thing, after all. There are a lot of conventional things that were proven to be very, very good that we have rejected in recent years to our, should I say, eventual demise. On that happy note, Stan Gibalisco signing off from Pahasapa, the Black Hills, where the Lakota people come to pray for the state of the world, perhaps hoping that we will revert to some of the conventions that we have abandoned. So long.